Hi guys, Adam Nemini, CEO of Aerospace 2000. Welcome to my second video vlog. So I'd like to start off by saying a big thank you to everyone for all your positive comments on my last video vlog on the fire extinguishers. Following on from the theme of safety, we're gonna cover escape slides today. Escape slides as a passenger is the slide you never wanna to have to ride. And we're going to cover things such as who the different players are, some of the cool features on it, and the maintenance aspect. When it comes to the escape slide world, you have two manufacturers. Out of the East Coast, Belmar, New Jersey, is Air Cruisers, part of Zodiac Group, now part of Safran. And on the West Coast, you've got Goodrich, now part of UTC, based out of Phoenix, Arizona. So we're going to look today at a 737 Classic slide. It's one of the smallest slides on the market. All intents and purposes, they all work very similar to each other. And we're gonna look at some of the key features which show you how something this small, when it's packed, inflates into this big beast over here. So it's pretty remarkable how it goes from that size to this, which is five and a half meters, nearly 16, 17 foot in a little over six seconds. When we look at this slide, the main material used is a polyurethane coated nylon. Basically the same as your general windbreak or waterproof jacket you may buy in the shops. All escape slides are painted grey and there's a reason for that. It's actually a special grey paint which is reflective of heat and of course if there's a fire you need to make sure that it can withstand it for a certain period of time so it doesn't melt in case there's an evacuation. We're now going to look closely at one of the smaller features on the slide, which is pretty much one of the coolest ones as well, and that's the inflation system. Most people know that escape slides have a cylinder or a reservoir attached to it or separately, which is then connected by a hose, and they incorrectly assume that's what inflates the slide. That's only actually partially true. The cylinders on the slides are actually too small to fully inflate it, and there's a few reasons why. Number one, to have a cylinder capable of inflating it to the size we saw this one can go to, you'd need something three or four times the size. And that poses various problems. Number one, you'd need a cylinder three or four times the size. That's gonna make it a lot heavier, carrying a lot more pressure, so it's a danger. Number two, and most importantly, a larger cylinder will take much longer to inflate the slide. Last thing you want as a passenger in an evacuation is the air steward there saying, you've got a guy's got to wait a minute, it's going to be a while until the slide's fully inflated. All slides have to pretty much inflate fully within six seconds. And the way that the engineers, when they manufactured these, went about sorting that is a very clever system and it's to do with the aspirator, which we're going to look at in closer detail. So some of you guys who have been up close to escape slides will be familiar with this section looks pretty innocuous, pretty nondescript. This is the aspirator, and it's one of the most important elements of the inflation system. Now, as we discussed, the bottle, cylinder which sits inside, isn't capable of doing the full inflation on the slide. It relies on this for most part, and it's very clever. The manufacturers, when they design the slide, use some of the physics of what's called the Venturi effect. And essentially what that is in layman's terms is there's a funnel which narrows. And as air passing through narrows, it creates a pressure drop. That pressure drop then incites more air to go in. So for the most part, the cylinder does an initial boost of the slide just to get it slightly inflated. It then pumps most of the inflation through the aspirator and that causes like a turbo charge of suction. So through here, you're gonna be getting an absolute huge mass of air being put into the slide. So actually the slide for about two thirds, three quarters is inflated by ambient air. When the pressure reaches what it needs to be, these check valves, butterfly valves, close up. So for pretty much most escape slides, the use of the cylinder and the aspirator to inflate the slide works for most of them. The Airbus 380 is one of the exceptions, especially the upper deck slides. The A380, if you were to get off one of those from the upper deck, that's like going down a three-story building. It's that high up. And it simply wasn't enough just to use the Venturi effect on the aspirators and the cylinder. 
So Goodrich, the OEM on those wines, came up with an additional way to help introduce more inflation, and that's with the use of a gas generator. What that does is it creates its own chemical reaction, which makes more air, and then that introduces even more suction. So not only have you already got a turbo boost of air, this generator gives it even more of a charge. So this particular escape slide is an unserviceable one which will use compressed air, inflate it, demonstration purposes, when we have new staff and what have you. And um, one of the features here is, this is what's called the GERT bar. Now on the aircraft, when they engage a slide and they say doors to automatic, they're engaging this. And were the cabin crew to open the doors in the emergency, this gets pulled and triggers the slide to then inflate. If the automatic uh, inflation system doesn't work, you've also got a backup, which if the cabin crew pulls this, it should help just in case there was an issue with the initial deployment. Now I'm gonna talk about slides and life raft and the difference between them. Not all aircraft have an escape slide on. It's all to do with how high off the ground they are. So the ATR or the Ombre 145, for example, pretty low to the ground, so in an emergency evacuation, you would just jump off it. As soon as you start getting a bit higher, the Ombre 170, 190s and so on, you then have to have an escape slide. Regardless of whether you've got a slide or not, if you're flying over water, all operators have to carry a life raft as well. So in an emergency evacuation, passengers can deploy into that. Now you can see these are quite big units and take up a lot of space and weight. Golden rule, anything aviation related is reduce the weight. And on the A320, for example, Air Cruiser Zodiac came up with quite an ingenious idea, was to combine these two and make a slide raft. So this is not only an escape slide, it also detaches and becomes a raft. I'm sure all of you guys are familiar with Captain Sully and the Miracle on the Hudson. This is what the guys used on that. And it's a lot smaller than having to carry one of these together with the raft. So we're now going to discuss the maintenance aspect of the escape slider. Because they play such a critical role, they have to, by aviation rules, be removed every three years for full inflation to make sure that they operate as they should. You guys, recall my last video blog where we discussed hydrostatic testing. The cylinders also need to go for a hydrostatic test to make sure they can hold their charge. Now, the escape slides, it's a pretty thin material as we discussed, nylon with the polyurethane paint on it. That paint eventually starts cracking. Anything with age, that's what happens. And because of that, by general rule of thumb, as it gets older, it's gonna start cracking more and it's not gonna be able to hold the inflation. So the aviation rules are, up to the age of 15 years, you overhaul them every three years. And then once it reaches over 15 years, every single year, you have to do a removal and a full inflation. And that's just not economical for operators. So at Aerospace 2000, we're very conscious that we're offering the marketplace some of the youngest escape lines on the market because we fully appreciate as they get older, they devalue in price because no one wants a slide you remove every year. Some of you guys may know when I started off my experience in aircraft spare parts in the early 2000s, it was at an escape slide shop in the UK and amazing exposure probably the reason why I love slides and fascinated by them. As we talk about the maintenance on them, I'll tell you a little other known secret, and that is why is there so much white powder on these? When we talk about how difficult it is to pack the slides, one of the best friends called up in the CMM when you repair these is talcum powder. Now the reason they use so much talcum powder is when you're doing the folds and the creases, it really helps the guys. Now, once these escape slides are fully inflated, in order to then get them from a deployed state back to this, is a very complicated process. And if you think it's quite similar to maybe how you pack a parachute, every fold, every crease, every way you do it, has to be done exactly right, because otherwise, when it comes time to deploy the slide, it will not inflate properly. Now, it involves using a lot of muscles, so if you've been skipping out leg day, arm day, that's not the sort of engineers that work on this, even some of your strongest guys, because it's a very physical job. Sometimes on the larger slides, you have three or four guys all helping to cram it in, and you have to make sure it's within the right tolerances. You also need to use ovens and freezers to help with the creasing and the expansion and contraction, 
because it needs to be done exactly right. So I hope this has been a very interesting one for you guys, giving you a full Escape Slide 101. You've learned a bit from it. Once again, I very much appreciate your feedback. Until the next time, stay safe, stay positive, stay blessed.